Hey everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. We are back here at the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Company, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Doug, I love coming here, you know that. I can't thank you enough for the hospitality you've showed us over the years. We've done a lot of cool stuff here, but we've got a car here we've never done a video on, which is kind of odd. Yeah. For the amount of Cords and Auburns that you run through here, and even Duesenbergs, we've seen a lot of cool stuff. But there's one Cord we've never done, the L29, and you've got one here That's today. Right. right. Well, this is it. It's a 1930 L29. It's called an L29 because it was designed in 1929. Um, this was supposedly the first front wheel drive car built in America. Uh, unlike the later version of the Cord 3637, which is all robotically shifting, this is still a manual shift, but the transmission is up front. So we'll show you how it shifts mechanically. Basically, the shift lever reaches all the way across the engine to the front of the transmission to make it shift. But L29s, uh, are very rare for us to have in the factory. When Dad bought the factory in 1960, he bought all the parts from 1928 to 1936 on Auburn and all the 36, 37 parts. The L29 cord parts were sold off. So we haven't serviced a lot of L29 cords. Now Dad had an L29 cord and this is one of the few that have been in the factory is where the other cords you'll see them all day, every day where there's always five, 10 of them in here. <clears throat> this is pretty rare for us. We bought this for a, a friend of mine, as a doctor in Denver, Colorado, and he said he always wanted an L29. So this is an older restoration that was a California car, a rust-free car, very nice car, good driver, and uh, he's going to take it to Auburn, Indiana this year and drive it in the Prada Classic. It's not going to be judged because it's not quite up to judging standards. We're going to put a, a whole new paint job on it, freshen up the engine compartment, but it is still a very nice 1930 L29. They made them in 29, 30, 31, and 32, and then they didn't build another core till 36. So from 32 to th early 36, it went from this, which is absolutely stunning and beautiful, to the Art Deco 36, 37, 810, 812 cords that we know of. So this is a beautiful example of a real deal L29 Cabriolet. Everybody, they made them in a sedan, they made them in a convertible sedan, made them in a convertible coupe or a Cabriolet, which is what this is. But they're an all weather car, windows roll up and down. Uh, they're a <coughs> 60 mile an hour car. Um, this car is beautiful, burgundy leather interior, a beautiful black top on it. Um, car is absolutely stunning. L29 cords have really increased in value. I think L29s, there's been some very rare, one of a kind, famous owned L29s that have brought a million dollars. A really nice example of a Cabriolet like this one is, is what people want. They want the two-seater, convertible, convertible Cooper Cabriolet. And they're going anywhere now from 250,000 to probably 600,000 has been the top dollar. But I think you'll see a day in the future that this will be a million dollar car. But uh, it's so desirable and everybody who collects classics wants an L29. And uh, we get to enjoy this one and we're gonna get to put a new paint job on it and. Uh, just have fun with it and show it off and drive it and play with it. So there's your 1930 L29, Chad. That's, uh, and she's a beauty. It's like I said, it's cool because it's something that we haven't talked about on here before. And they're such a unique car. Yeah, you just don't see them. Uh, and L29 lovers, I'll, the hood will open and it, uh, we can, you can see how it actually shifts. But the engine compartment's got to be cleaned up. Like I say, it's a good driver. But Chad, get in there and move the shift lever. You see how you shift a four-speed transmission that's in the front of an engine. Uh, and it's just that one giant arm, that three-speed transmission. I said four-speed, three-speed transmission. The later ones are four-speeds. But interesting, huh? So front, first front-wheel drive car in America right here, L29. And they made no 
front wheel drive cars after World War II until we did it here in the factory in 1966 with the second generation Accord and then Toronado did it in 66 with the new Toronado. But this is what inspired uh, front wheel drive in America. Now almost everything's front wheel drive. Yeah. Now, if we, and, we, and the cool, cool thing about this is if we look down here, we can actually see what are today known as CV shafts. Right. Sticking out here. Because remember, you know, in 1929, if you looked under almost any car in America, you basically saw a straight chunk of I-beam. Right. Well, and what is so neat about the front wheel drive is see how low this is? Cars really set up high. That's up true. On top of the frame. Well, because the front wheel drive, they could lower the car. So this looks a lot like a uh, 1930 Auburn or 1929 or 30 Auburn, except it's a lot lower and sleeker because of the front wheel drive. Lift. And when you look at it, when you stand beside this car, it's kind of shoulder height. Yeah. Which, you know, it wasn't uncommon for a car to be taller than you That's right. in that era. So it's a stunning car, even though I understand you guys are going to redo it. It's, an, it's a yeah, beautiful it's car. Yeah, it's still a beautiful car as it is, and it's original colors, and I like the colors. So the colors are going to stay the same. The pinstripe, I think, color is going to change. The burgundy interior will stay. The black top will stay. The gray and the black will stay. The wire wheels are going to be sent off to Dayton and be chrome-plated. The customer wanted all six chrome-plated wheels. Uh, they look good painted, but there's something about chrome. Just awful flashy, so we're going to go with chrome wheels on it. Um, it's a well sorted out car, well known car. It's driven in rallies in California a lot over the years. I don't think this car has ever been to Auburn, Indiana, so it should show up to Auburn for the first time in its life since it was built back in 1930. So, gorgeous example of a real deal L29 1930 model. Um, it's fun to have it here. Like I say, we've had so few of them in here, it's really enjoyable to be able to show this off. We get a lot of people come in and say, I want to buy that one. And I go, I got a whole lot more of the other ones for sale. <laughs> so it's not, this one is not for sale at this point. The customer says he wants to, this will be a car that he will never sell. And I've never really seen many of these. There's one at Pioneer Village. I think it's a sedan. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really the only other L29 that I've seen. Now, is this a rumble seat? or is It this is. It's a rumble seat car. So that's why it's got the separate and, trunk. And an original trunk on the back. So you, you is this what, what they call a mother-in-law seat. It okay, should so open. The, so I, this, I don't think it's latched. I'll go ahead and just try to lift it. Oh, yeah. Thing. Wow. So that flips right up. Yeah. And then if you have the top down, you can you can talk. If your mother-in-law is back there, you keep the top up. <laughs> but... And while you think about that thing with the top down, rolling down the highway, that is, that is an amazing stunning that's car. That's a car in it. Yeah. Yes, it is. And again, when people were driving Model A Fords, were brand Oh, yeah, new. yeah. And then something like this shows up next to your Model A. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> this is as good as good. And they were expensive cars. Um, you know, these cars cost over $2,000 new. And they would, and Could, I'd say equivalent price today would probably be, you know, they'd be a $100,000 car. <coughs> by today's dollars again l29s go from i don't know 250 to five six hundred thousand right now so um very desirable collectible car and it's all because of the styling and this was named after el cord who was the president of cord automobile company who auburn automobile company hired him to come in and save the company back in the 20s and um he uh, was with the company from the 20s, clear until the bankruptcies in 1937 was the last. Auburn, Cord, and Duesenberg were three separate companies. And then my father bought the rights to Auburn, Cord, Duesenberg, and actually moved the entire factory. So he bought the factory from Auburn, Indiana, and moved the factory to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. 750,000 pounds of NOS parts came with the factory, but very few L29 parts. Well, once again, it's a beautiful car. Something else, and that's what's so great about coming here, we always learn something. Just like the shifting mechanism. There again, we're talking technology that was developed just almost 100 years ago at this point. And technology that's still being used today. But real quickly, like, put your camera on this car. This is 19, as, as late as 1932. And then in three years, this turned in 
to this. That's a lot of advancement in just a few years. So this is what everybody thinks of as cord, but that's what started it all. Pretty, uh, a pretty cool story the way that all came about in that, and you think about that, we're talking less than 10 years from when that car was developed to when this car was done, and then the company actually was gone after that. But you think of the innovation, the technology, what happened in that window that we still use today, almost 100 years later, from this small, independent automo automobile manufacturer. Yeah, the advancement, it continues to advance, but there's still there are V8s, it's, it's all about compression and fuel and spark and yep. the same thing. You notice the, this is the Cord original logo, this is the Yale Cord's family crest. So it's on all the Cord cars, it's on, I think it's on my shirt, it's probably on your shirt, but this is the Cord uh, family crest. We actually own the trademark on all the Auburn and Cord stuff when Dad bought the factory, not Duesenberg, We've got the use of the Duesenberg name, but we didn't own the trademark, but we did own the trademark for Cord and Auburn. And here you guys are 100 years later carrying on the tradition and keeping these magnificent cars on the right. road with the knowledge, the parts, the trained, skilled craftsmen to keep these things going. Yep. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, every day I get phone calls. What about this? What about that? What, is this correct? Is that correct? And um, we... Uh, we just continue to keep the legacy alive. Yep, and that's what's so amazing about coming here. So once again, Doug, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing more of your knowledge with us, showing more people about these amazing cars, including the L29, the super cool shifting linkage, something that most people would never even right. think would even exist on a car like that. Right, right. And uh, so much awesome knowledge here. Be sure to check out the full playlist because we've got a lot of amazing things from here. Doug, once again, thank you. Appreciate your hospitality. Okay. Let's go see what other cool stuff you got sitting around right. here. Thanks.